What we just saw from Joe Biden was not a state of the union. No, what we just witnessed from Joe Biden was a state of confusion. To the everyday hardworking Americans that just heard that speech, I'm sure you feel gaslit and lied to. The country Joe was talking about looks nothing like the reality that we all have been forced to face under his failed leadership. Skyrocketing inflation, unaffordable housing, crime running rampant, and a world that's on fire. Despite what Joe Biden says, the State of the Union is weak, and the American dream is on life support. It wasn't that long ago that President Donald J. Trump was in the Oval Office, and we the people got to experience peace and prosperity. Under President Trump, we had a historic economy. We had law and order. We had a secure border. And we were energy independent. And the world was at peace. America was safe and secure and prosperous under President Trump. But in just three short years, all of that safety and security and prosperity has been destroyed. Since Joe Biden took office, overall prices are up nearly 18%. It cost our families $12,000 more per year just to maintain the same quality of life that we had under President Trump. I don't know many people who got a $12,000 raise. Americans are struggling in Joe Biden's economy. For many, the American dream is out of reach. For others, like Lake and Riley, the American dream has been completely snuffed out. American sons and daughters are being slaughtered at the hands of criminal illegal aliens who've broken into our country. Lakin's life matters, but you won't hear that from the propagandists in the mainstream media. I refuse to sit idly by and allow the fake news to downplay the tragic death of Lakin, a motivated nursing student taken from this world far too soon at the hands of a crazed man from Venezuela who should have never been in our country to begin with. Lakin's name must be shouted from the rooftops. We must hold the Democrats in Washington, D.C. accountable. Action must be taken immediately to prevent more lives from being taken from us. My own daughter, Ruby, is just about Lakin's age. As a young mother, I would have never dreamt that my Ruby would one day live in a world where she couldn't go for a jog on her college campus without fearing for her life or worrying about her safety. We must protect America's women, and that begins by ending Joe Biden's border crisis, kicking him out of office, and removing the Biden yes-men, like my opponent, Ruben Gallego, who have allowed these tragedies to transpire. I had the opportunity to cover the state of Arizona for about 27 years as a fair and honest journalist. I've never seen our southern border more secure than it was under President Trump, and I've never seen it more open and dangerous than it currently is under Joe Biden and his Democrat enablers like my opponent, Ruben Gallego. Biden came into office and used 96 executive orders to rip that border wide open in his first 100 days. And since then, Joe Biden has allowed about 9 million illegal immigrants to enter our country. He spent millions of dollars in government handouts to give to illegal aliens, and he's organized covert secret flights to import them into our interior of our country, all while the American people struggle. Far from being commander in chief, Joe Biden has earned the reputation as the greatest facilitator of the largest human trafficking operation in world history. He's handed operational control of our southern border to the narco-terrorist cartels, thereby allowing for the uninterrupted flow of military-age fighting men into our country and the unmitigated trafficking of women, children, guns, and dangerous drugs across our border. After all of this, Joe Biden now says that he wants to work with President Trump to find a solution. Newsflash, Joe. Not only does President Trump have a solution, he is the solution. Only by restoring President Trump's border policies, rescinding Biden's executive orders, and finishing the wall can we return to the safety we enjoyed under President Trump. But Joe Biden's failures don't stop there. Caving to the wishes of the radical climate activists, Joe Biden declared war on domestic energy production. Since Biden entered office, home heating oil prices up 44 percent, gasoline prices up 33 percent, and electricity and natural gas, they're both up nearly 30 percent. Because of Joe Biden and the Democrats, America is now dependent on foreign countries to supply natural resources and energy that we have right here at home. 
President Trump's foreign policy of peace through strength maintained global order. Now our enemies take a look at Biden and all they see is a feeble, weak man. President Trump brought historic peace to the Middle East with the Abraham Accords. We moved the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem and brought foreign nations together. Now, under Biden, the Middle East is on fire and the entire globe is on the brink of World War III. President Trump defused a nuclear North Korea and held communist China accountable. Putin didn't dare enter Ukraine under the 45th president's watch. Now, under Joe Biden and the Democrats, everything has gone to hell in a handbasket. Biden facilitated one of the most disastrous military operations in U.S. history by recklessly pulling out of Afghanistan. He left allies behind to be slaughtered by the Taliban and billions of dollars worth of weapons to be resources to be used to stoke terror throughout the world. Biden emboldened the Hamas terrorists to attack Israel, increased our dependence on communist China, and watched as Putin invaded Ukraine. He then sabotaged Ukrainian peace talks, only to pour an endless supply of American taxpayer money into a corrupt country with zero oversight and no plans. And now, as his proxy war collapses under a generation of dead Eastern Europeans, Joe Biden continues to threaten to send our American boys and girls, our American men and women, into that failed war. We're on the verge of World War III due to the irresponsible and incoherent foreign policy of the Biden administration. It's high time that we have actual diplomats back in Washington, D.C., ones who actually know a little bit about the art of the deal. Times are dark, but there are better times ahead. We are up against a sizable threat in the radical left, but we are not powerless to stop it. We have two very powerful weapons in our arsenal, our voice and our vote. And the only way we can preserve the American dream, secure the border, restore law and order, end the endless wars, and save our country from the cataclysmic path that Joe Biden has sent us down is to elect President Donald J. Trump to the White House and send him some America First backup to the United States Senate. As a U.S. Senator, I will work tirelessly with my Republican colleagues to advance President Trump's agenda in D.C., and together we will make America great again. You may not think that you can make a difference, but you can. Register people to vote. Knock on doors. Make sure your neighbors turn in their ballots. Get involved with a campaign that you care about. And donate money if you can. And get 10 friends to vote, too. Every little bit helps. We all have a role to play to save this country. It won't be easy, but nothing worth fighting for ever is. We're going to win this. And next year, at this time, we're going to have a State of the Union that we can all be proud of.